वेलकम टू मिनतीस एजुकेशन फॉर सी एस आया एन टी ए यू जी सी नेट सेट जे आर एफ गेट जाम आई आई टी एक्सप्लेनेशन रॉयलन्स वी फ्लेचर दिस केस इस्टैब्लिश द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ स्ट्रिक्ट लाइबिलिटी फॉर डेंजरस सब्सटैंसेज दिस मीन्स दैट अ पर्सन हु ब्रिंग्स ऑन टू दे लैंड अ डेंजरस सब्सटेंस इज लाइबल फॉर एनी डैमेज कॉस्ड बाय दैट सब्सटेंस इवन इफ दे वर नॉट नेग्लिजेंट Donog v Stevenson this case established the principle of liability for negligence in negligence cases this means that a person is liable for any damage caused by their negligence even if they did not intend to cause that damage Gladstead Grammar School case this case established that minors are liable for negligence in tort cases however the courts will take into account the age and maturity of the minor when deciding whether to award damages rose v ford this case established that minors are liable for the consequences of their own tortious acts such as failing to complete a test however the courts will take into account the age and maturity of the minor when deciding the amount of damages to award Raylan v Fletcher is a landmark case in English tort law establishing the rule of strict liability for non-natural uses of land. It was decided by the House of Lords in 1868. In the case, the defendant Raylan's employed contractors to build a reservoir on his land. The contractors found disused mines when digging but failed to seal them properly. They filled the reservoir with water. As a result, water flooded through the mine shafts into the plaintiff's mines on the adjoining property. The plaintiff, Fletcher, sued Rylands for damages. Rylands argued that he was not liable because he had not been negligent. However, the House of Lords held that Rylands was strictly liable for the damage caused by the escape of water from his reservoir. The rule in Rylands v Fletcher is based on the principle that people who engage in non-natural uses of land should be held responsible for any damage that results even if they are not negligent. The rule is intended to deter people from engaging in dangerous activities and to compensate victims of such activities. The rule in Rylands v Fletcher has been applied in a wide range of cases including cases involving the escape of fire, gas, and other hazardous substances it has also been applied in cases involving the escape of animals and other objects there are a number of exceptions to the rule in rylands v fletcher for example the rule does not apply to natural uses of land such as agriculture and forestry the rule also does not apply to cases where the plaintiff has consented to the defendant's use of the land or where the plaintiff's own negligence has contributed to the damage the rule in rylands v fletcher is an important part of english tort law it helps to protect people from the dangers posed by non-natural uses of land dono v stevenson 1932 AC 562 was a landmark court decision in Scots delict law and English tort law by the House of Lords. It laid the foundation of the modern law of negligence in common law jurisdictions worldwide as well as in Scotland, establishing general principles of the duty of care. The case involved Mrs May Donogh drinking a bottle of ginger beer in a cafe in Paisley, Renfrewshire. Unknown to her or anybody else, a decomposed snail was in the bottle she fell ill and subsequently sued the ginger beer manufacturer mr stevenson the case went to the house of lords where lord atkin delivered the leading judgment he established the neighbor principle which states that a person owes a duty of care to all those who are so closely and directly affected by their act that they ought reasonably to have them in contemplation as being so affected when they are directing their mind to the acts or omissions which are called in question lord akin also identified three factors to consider in determining whether a duty of care exists foreseeability could the defendant reasonably have foreseen that their actions or omissions would cause harm to the claimant proximity 
Is there a sufficiently close relationship between the defendant and the claimant? Policy considerations Are there any public policy reasons why a duty of care should not be imposed? In the case of Donog v. Stevenson, Lord Upkeen held that the manufacturer owed a duty of care to the consumer, even though there was no contract between them. This was because it was reasonably foreseeable that if the manufacturer failed to take reasonable care to ensure the safety of its products, consumers would be harmed. The House of Lords found in favor of Mrs. Donog and awarded her damages. The case established the principle that manufacturers owe a duty of care to the ultimate consumers of their products, even if they do not know who those consumers are. The Donog v. Stevenson case is one of the most important cases in the history of negligence law. It has been cited and applied in countless cases over the years and has helped to shape the law of negligence in common law jurisdictions around the world. Rose v. Ford is a landmark case in English law decided by the House of Lords in 1937. It concerned the assessment of damages for personal injury in a case where the injured person died shortly after the accident. The facts of the case were as follows. The deceased, a young woman of 23, was seriously injured in a motor car collision caused by the negligence of the defendant. Her right leg was so badly injured that it had to be amputated two days after the accident. She died two days later as a direct result of the injury. The deceased's estate claimed damages under two heads. One under the Fatal Accidents Acts 1884-1934 as a partial dependent of the deceased. Two under the Law Reform Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1934 for the benefit of the deceased's estate in respect of pain and suffering. Loss of the leg. Shortening of reasonable expectation of life. The trial judge awarded damages under all three heads. However, the Court of Appeal reversed the award for damages for loss of the leg on the grounds that the deceased had only lost her leg for two days before her death. The House of Lords upheld the decision of the Court of Appeal. Lord Atkin, delivering the leading judgment, held that the damages recoverable under the Law Reform, Miscellaneous Provisions, Act 1934 were to be calculated without reference to any loss or gain to the deceased's estate consequent on their death, except that a sum in respect of funeral expenses could be included. Lord Akin explained that the purpose of the Act was to ensure that the deceased's estate was compensated for the loss that the deceased had suffered personally, rather than for the loss that the estate had suffered as a result of the deceased's death. He said, The estate is not to be put in a better or worse position than the deceased would have been in if he had lived. In the case of Rose v. Ford, the deceased had only lost her leg for two days before her death. Therefore, the House of Lords held that her estate could only recover damages for the pain and suffering that she had endured during that time. The case of Rose v. Ford is still an important authority on the assessment of damages for personal injury in England and Wales. It establishes the principle that damages are to be calculated without reference to any loss or gain to the deceased's estate consequent on their death. Thanks for watching. Visit again.